What is up, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of History Behind the Horror. I am your host, Tay, and for tonight's video, we will be talking about Alma Wade from the Fear series. This is a video that's been highly requested of me from you guys for a very long time, and I thought it would be perfect to do Alma Wade since Halloween is just around the corner. So always remember, if you guys do enjoy this video and you would like to see more fear content in the near future, make sure you guys like the video and share it. That lets me know 100% that you guys did enjoy this video and you would love to see another fear video. And also hit the bell notification so you guys always stay up to date when a new video is released. And also remember to put in the comment section for any of the character you would like to see on this channel and with that being said thank you guys so much for tuning in to this episode tonight and as always i hope you all enjoy the video Alma Wade is the key figure and main antagonist of the Fear series and a powerful psychic who seeks revenge against ATC due to their usage of her in a series of inhumane experiments and secret projects with the aim of making her powers financially viable. Alma Wade was born to Harlan Wade and his wife, Elizabeth Wade, on August 26, 1979. Alma's mother died during labor, leaving Alma solely in her father's custody. For reasons unknown, Alma was gifted with tremendous psychic powers, and as a result, she suffered nightmares and was attuned to the negative emotions of the people around her. Her father noticed her powers not long after birth and introduced her to the ATC's experiments when she was only three years old. The ATC inducted Alma into Project Paragon, where they tested her for every type of psychic power, and she passed all tests. She was experimented on relentlessly to discover the source of her powers and how they responded to external stimuli. When Alma was five, she began to purposely fail the ATC's tests with the hope that the company would stop experimenting on her. Sometime later, she set fire to a lab in the Project Origin facility and began to psychically attack the ATC scientists experimenting on her. Her victims began to have vivid nightmares, sudden mood changes, and delusions. When the ATC realized that the only thing stopping Alma from doing much worse things to the scientists was her young age, they made plans to keep her alive, but unable to psychically attack their employees by keeping her sedated. At the age of seven, Alma was recruited into the ATC's Project Origin with the aim of creating psychic individuals from a psychic forbearer. Two days before her eighth birthday in 1987, she was put into an induced coma and locked into the vault, a structure located deep inside the Secret Origin facility, neutralizing her psychic abilities. A note can be found in Fear 2 Project Origin suggests Alma may have already killed at least one person before being put into a coma. As well, she is seen with blood on her legs when ATC guards transport her to the boat. During the project, Alma was impregnated twice with prototypes created from her own DNA mixed with that of the Origin researchers, including Harlan Wade himself. She gave birth to the first prototype, the Point Man, when she was only 15 years old, and then a second, Paxton Fatale, a year later. Alma eventually merged her consciousness with that of Fatale when she was 10 causing the ATC to shut down Project Origin completely and to pull the plug on Alma. Life support was removed from the vault when Alma was 26, leading ATC to believe she was dead. According to Harlan Wade, her physical body died six days after the removal of life support, but according to Fear 2 Project Origin, her psychic energy continued to linger long after her heart stopped, fueled by the hatred of her angry, vengeful spirit. However, she remained mostly dormant for 20 years as her spirit was still sealed inside the vault with her corpse. During this time, people in the area of her corpse would feel uneasy or ill, and that part of the city was eventually abandoned. Frightened by Alma's powers, ATC employees shut down the facility in which her body lingered, refusing to reopen it until after 20 years had passed. The 
The identity and mystery of Alma Wade is the very core of the game. First appearing in the introduction, Alma's presence is felt constantly throughout the game with hints and glimpses of her life made through the game's use of visions and info the point man gathers through both Paxton Fatel and several laptops scattered throughout the areas he searches. She appears as an 8 year old girl wearing a red dress and has a disturbingly blank mask like face almost completely obscured by long dark hair. Right from her first appearance, it's never quite clear if Alma is real or if she only exists in the minds of people seeing her. Bloody footprints can be found in some places where she walks and she is briefly visible on a CCTV monitor in the South River Wastewater Treatment Plant in the same room where Bill Moody is interrogated. Alma is seen repeatedly in fear, often only out of the corner of the point man's eye, standing in the shadows or darting quickly out of sight. Her appearances are usually preceded by a static radio transmission logged as unknown origin. As her appearances are almost always accompanied by scenes of extreme violence, this rapidly becomes extremely unnerving. Sometimes all is heard is her soft giggling laugh or indistinct words whispered as though in the point man's ear. 20 years after Alma's death, the ATC president reopens the origin facility despite the protest from ATC scientists that tendrils of Alma's psychic powers may still be active. She sends in a team to assess the facility's condition. The team promptly disappears, killed by Alma. The president then sends in a second team, but they also disappear. Realizing that Alma's spirit has somehow been awakened by the reopening of the origin sites, the president seals the facility. A few days later, Alma appears to Fatel and creates a second synchronicity event, causing Fatel to go rogue and take command of an army of clone soldiers known as Replicas. Fatel finds and kills Charles, whom he cannibalizes in the belief that he can obtain his victim's thoughts through their flesh. He and Alma learn about a report being worked on by ATC employees dealing with contamination of water in the Auburn district. The two set out to find the people attached to the report, possibly believing that they may know the location of Alma's body. They first visit the South River Wastewater Treatment Plant where Alma attempts to kill the Point Man. Despite her efforts, the Point Man survives, and Alma becomes curious about him. She begins to appear to him randomly, always watching him, but never attacking. Fatel and Alma then move to the ATC headquarters. In both the wastewater plant and ATC headquarters, they killed everyone present, whether these people know about Project Origin in Alma or not. There, Alma continues to watch the point man and eventually learns that he is her son. Soon after, Alma and Fatel learn the location of the Origin facility and they depart from ATC's headquarters to find it. Along the way, Fatel is able to kidnap Alma's sister, Alice Wade, and kills her while Alma watches. The President's Field Guide states that Alma was likely jealous of Alice due to the treatment she received from their father, and so she wanted to witness her death. Inside the Origins facility, Harlan Wade releases Alma's true body, now resurrected by Alma's presence, and her appearance changes to that of a naked, emaciated young woman. Alma immediately kills Harlan and then begins to walk around the facility expelling nightmares wherever she goes. Soon after, Alma takes the point man into a hallucination, but instead it shows a memory that reveals her to be Harlan's daughter, as well as that the point man is in fact Alma's son. In the memory, Alma is reaching out to him, demanding that her child be returned to her, only to encounter stern resistance from her father. She appears to the point man, attempting to hug him, but as her touch is lethal, he is forced to shoot her repeatedly, not stopping until she disappears. After that, the point man walks down a hallway on his way out of the building when Alma again whispers to him, saying, I know who you are, my baby. The point man exits the building only to be hit by the explosion from the origin facility. The point man survives and is rescued by a chopper. At the end, Alma manifests herself on the side of the chopper the point man is riding in, causing it to crash.
that. We still don't know the extent of the damage. We haven't been able to get through to anyone since the explosion. What about Alma? What happened to her? What was that sound? In Fear 2 Project Origin, Alma's presence is felt much more than in the original Fear, mostly due to her psychic connection she bears with Michael Backett, due to his unknowing part in the Harbinger program. This connection grows more and more over the course of the game in parallel with Backett's telepathic signal. Over the course of the game, several of the male members of Dark Signal begin exhibiting excessive fixations on Alma as her psychic signature effectively drives them into a reproductive aggression as she is effectively in heat and seeks to conceive with one of them. She is responsible for the deaths of most of the Dark Signal squad whom she seemed to have found to be unsuitable mates, killing James Fox and Cedric Griffin with large tentacles that appear to be the roots of trees likely from her memories of being on a swing before being shut away in the vault. She begins to take over Harold Keegan's mind, causing him to follow and try to help her. He is fought as the final boss of the game in a hallucination, lacking eyes and looking as though he has suffered charring to his entire body. He fights with Backett, upset that Alma has chosen Backett over him. Alma's younger form is not seen throughout most of the game, save for a few scenes at the beginning and certain flashbacks during the game. Her main form is the same as that seen at the end of Fear, her real body emancipated and naked with dead eyes. She lacks the visual disturbances around her body seen in the first game, however. Early on it is made apparent that Alma has some type of interest in Backett and to some extent his well-being. This is confirmed by Dr. York's surgical notes in which he states that Backett nearly died twice during the operating procedure, only to have him stabilized without any direct aid by their parts. Upon recovery, Alma is seen watching over him, intrigued but at the same time unsure as to why he can sense her presence. She is then seen leading him deeper into the Harbinger facility, occasionally pausing to make certain that he is following her. Once inside the TAC, Baki becomes fully attuned to Alma and as a result their psychic bond intensifies. When several ATC Black Ops soldiers try to attack him during the entombment process, she grows enraged and kills them. In several other instances, when Bacchus' life is in grave danger, she protects him, but at the same time, she also seems content to just leave him be, allowing Replica or ATC forces a chance to try to kill Bacchus. Eventually, Alma begins developing romantic feelings for him, indicated by changing her appearance to that of a healthy, voluptuous woman, but because her emotions are stunted, she becomes obsessed with Bacchus. Unable to control her desires, Alma impulsively throws herself at him and repeatedly tries to rape Backett. Though in doing so, she inadvertently puts Backett's life at risk due to her psychic nature and unstable emotional feedback. Fortunately, he is able to drive her away before Alma ends his life. About midway into the game, she comes into physical contact with Backett yet again. As before, Backett pushes her away and Alma, angered by his rejection, cries out, why, why, and promptly hurls him against the wall with her mind. Instead of finishing him off, she seems to react with confusion and even fright, possibly due to the fact that Bakit regards her as more of a threat than anything else. Her form then changes to a sexualized version of herself. After regarding him for some tense moments, Alma disappears. She comes into contact with Bakit several more times over the course of the game, in which she is forced to throw her off of him. Interestingly, she never pursues him right away, even though she could easily overpower him with little difficulty. At one point, however, as Backett steps off the final tram and Interval 06 approach, Alma runs at him, desperately clinging to him. Even when Backett resists her, she lunges at him again and again until he finally manages to board an elevator, losing her interest for the time being. By the end of the game, her intentions for Bakit becomes clear. After he is strapped into an amplifier on Steel Island, Alma appears before him. The amplifier begins to activate and his mind is locked into a hallucination where he is forced to fight Sergeant Keegan's phantoms. During the hallucination battle, Alma is heard vocalizing her ecstasy and in some instances when her psychic link is broken, she can be seen raping Bakit's body in the chamber sometimes even physically struggling with him in order to drive his mind back into the hallucination. 
At the height of the climax, and parallel to both the climax of the battle as well as both Alma's and Michael's orgasmic climaxes as their bodies copulate, Beckett kills Keegan and switches off the device, causing Alma to scream as she fades away into matter. Alma appears to him again, standing amidst a blasted landscape, heavily pregnant with Beckett's child. She places his hand on her stomach as emphasis to this act. A small voice is then heard to whisper, Mommy. In Fear 3, Alma is in labor with her child conceived with Michael Beckett. Paxton Fatale is allegedly assisting the point man, however, he wishes to see his brother embrace his family's power rather than destroy it. Alma appears before her sons numerous times, mostly in her child form but also in her adult form. When confronted by the creep, she reacts with intense fear, as the creature was created by the horrid memories of her late father, Harlan Wade, and not entirely of her own influence. Throughout the game, Alma can be heard screaming as her contractions intensify, causing psychic disturbances all over the city of Fairpoint. At the end, when the point man and Fatale reach her, Alma is shown to be weak and unable to move or speak. Depending on player actions, her child would be taken from her by one of the brothers. She either disappears and possibly still exists if the point man kills Fatale, or is eaten and killed slash absorbed by Fatale if he kills the point man. Interestingly, Alma's appearance and mannerisms are changed drastically in Fear 3. The obvious difference is her child form appearing to be much older than in previous installments, as well as having a blood dry face, sleeveless red dress, and brown shoes, as compared to her previous scene clean face, long sleeve red dress, and bare feet. The reasons for this change are unknown. Her adult form also has much longer hair than in other games, dragging on the floor behind her as she walks. Fear 3 is the only game where Alma is never heard to say anything, despite being quite vocal in other games and where Alma is never seen attacking or killing anyone. Unlike previous games, Alma is not the main antagonist in Fear 3, nor even technically an antagonist, as she never attempts to kill or harm the protagonist.
difficult, but the survivors of this ordeal owe you their lives. I know I do. something I need. <laughs> <laughs> 